Good morning, Kingsley Community. Pastor Colleen Wehrman here coming to you with another daily devotion for Wednesday, December 30th. And again, we're following 40 Days of Community by Rick Warren, and we're on day 20. Our theme is still, we're chosen to fellowship together by being patient with one another. So that's what we're going to learn today, how to be patient with each other. Our guys or our a scripture reading comes not from a gospel, but from an epistle, a letter, Ephesians 4, 2, B. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. From the writers of 40 Days, they write, The more we understand, the more patient we become. When we see the hurt beneath the anger or the reason behind the behavior, we're more likely to make allowance for each other's faults. The ability to understand is a sign of patience, Proverbs 14, verse 29. The Bible teaches, a man's wisdom gives him patience. It is to his glory to overlook an offense. <laughs> I'm just going to let that sit right there because I don't think anybody in this day and age is willing to overlook offenses. Everybody wants to jump down everybody's throats. You know, aren't you exhausted by doing that? I mean, overlook the offense. Sometimes it's not a big deal. Sometimes it's just a little snide remark, but everybody wants to go into battle over these little snide remarks or these little, and I'm not saying the person has the right to do that, but maybe they're just having a bad day. Can can we just give them a break? Can, wouldn't you want a break when you, I mean, I know when sometimes I get snippy, I would like a break, you know, from someone to extend some more grace, but instead it's, you get fighting, 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 and gossiping, 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 and rumors, rumors, rumors. And I just want you to know that Satan loves that. That's how he tries to defeat the church. That's how he breaks up churches. That's how he breaks up the fellowship of believers together. But we are commanded by Christ to forgive one another and be patient with each other. Here's what they write. I think this is a good reminder. It helps when facing a patient challenge, a patience challenge, to remember God will never ask you to give more patience to others than the patience he gives to you. And we know in the scriptures that uh, God is slow to anger and quick to listen and long suffering. That means patience. So the Apostle Paul uses his own life as an example of this, saying God showed him mercy despite his many sins so that Christ might display his unlimited patience. 1 Timothy 1.16 when, when we connect our own patience to the patience of Christ, we're able to cut each other some slack. We agree with the wisdom that love is patient, 1 Corinthians 13.4 and that impatience is not love. Don't we love that scripture, the love chapter in 1 Corinthians 13? We love to learn about love, and but the first thing it says is to be patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love doesn't envy. Love doesn't boast. So when we connect our own patience with the patience that God in Christ has given us, we're able to cut each other some slack. I read that again because I think maybe the new motto for 2021 is cut some slack. Give someone some slack. <laughs> the Apostle Paul wrote, Welcome with open arms fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. I'll just let that sit there. And don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with, even when it seems that they are strong on opinions but weak in the faith department. Remember, they have their own history to deal with. Treat them gently. That's from Romans 14.1. So one of the most practical steps towards real patience is learning to listen. This means more than just hearing someone else. It means to carefully, fully listen. The Bible tells us, listen before you answer. If you don't, you are being stupid and insulting. <laughs> That's from Proverbs 18, 13. That's pretty clear, the writer's right. <laughs> it means we shouldn't evaluate what someone has done or what we hear until we've heard the full story. God gave us two ears and one mouth, perhaps to tell us we should listen twice as much as we talk. Ask yourself these questions. What are the things that make me impatient? <clears throat> so what are the things that make you impatient? Me, I always seem to be running late, so other drivers make me impatient, even though it's my fault that I'm running late. <laughs> what does my impatience over those things say about my priorities? Apparently any better time management. How can I better understand the people who bring out my impatience? Listen, understand that 
they've scheduled their time and they're not in a hurry because they're not late. <laughs> Have I taken time to listen to their full story? So when you're impatient with someone, do you listen to their full story? Do you understand why they're angry or why they're going into this long-winded story? Maybe they've never had an opportunity for someone to listen to them. They were always cut off short in a relationship or never had the opportunity to speak. Um, have I? In what ways do people have to be patient with you? Do I give the same amount of grace to others as I expect others to give me? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I don't think we do. So 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, Love is patient. That means it puts up with a lot for a long time. God has put up with a lot and continues to put up a lot with us for a long time. God is long-suffering. He tarries before his return because he wants people to know his son Christ. So the next time your patience reaches its limit, remember how patient and understanding Christ has been with you. So again, points to remember, the more we understand, the more patient we become. So we gotta understand the full story. If someone's impatient with someone else and they come to you and they carry on all about it, you haven't heard the full story. So to get impatient with the person that they're talking about really doesn't help because um, you haven't heard the other side of the story. Question to consider. How can you become more patient with the people in your life? Again, if you want to learn great patience, pray for patience. And that old saying is God will give you opportunities to be patient. You'll either be in the longest line or you think you'll be in the shortest line at the grocery store and find out the lady in front of you has a check. And she hasn't filled it out correctly or whatever. So <laughs> this is your opportunity to learn how to love with patience like Christ does for us every single day. So I hope this was helpful to you. I will see you here tomorrow with another devotion for 40 Days of Community. Bye-bye.